Biggs's second stage, he calls what the teacher does. Uh, I suppose that after a period of time, instructors who are focused on who the students are and what they can and cannot do become increasingly frustrated and start looking around for techniques that they can employ, which are going to make it easier for these uh, theoretically underdeveloped students to progress faster and have more academic success. And so they begin to explore techniques. They visit the teaching, learning, and uh, assessment center. They go to the teaching commons. They uh, look for ways of employing desire to learn, all in an effort to try to level the playing field, to tease out the academic strengths of the students who are in front of them. These teachers ask themselves the question, if only I was a better teacher, the students would be more successful. Uh, well, that turns out to be a trap too. But instructors who employ interesting techniques get attention. They tend to be the ones who win the teaching awards. And the reason why they do so is because their classrooms are so different than the instructors who are making assumptions only about who the students are, not what the instructor is doing. Um, their, their classrooms are so different from those stage one instructors that they stand out. Uh, students appreciate it because there's novelty there. Uh, they don't know when they get into the classroom exactly what to expect and are pleasantly surprised by having something new to do. Uh, newness in itself uh, can convince students that there is sufficient attention being paid to them that they must in turn pay more attention uh, to the instructor. Well, this classroom dynamic is uh, probably sufficiently common in universities for us to point to it and say that's a kind of ideal that we want to reach. It is still, however, a teacher-centered classroom. The success in setting the learning goals is entirely in the hands of the instructor's techniques.